traditional Irish music today is international. For some uh, Irish Americans, there's a sense of identity through it. Uh, there's a sense of part of their heritage. I didn't realize how vital and energetic and propulsive it could be. It's definitely good to keep up the tradition. I like the diversity in the style. What's life without art? I became interested because my whole life growing up, we always had music playing in the house. Um, Irish music was one of the many kinds of music that we had playing. I knew Irish music was out there, but I did not, I was not interested until I heard that Chieftains 2, track 1, Spanish Misfortune and Jillian's Apples, and for the first time I thought, oh my god, that's, that sounds beautiful. I wouldn't say that traditional music, like the kind that you'd hear in a session, uh, jigs and reels and so forth, was a part of the fabric of my everyday life growing up, but it was in the background for sure. Um, and so that was always kind of a part of who I was just culturally. I felt very um, identified with the Irish culture. I really took to it because with classical music growing up, it was always kind of it had to be a certain way. So going into Irish music, um, you had the freedom to add whatever you wanted to it and kind of make it your own. So I think that's what I like about it most and that's what got me involved in it. The instruments I think that you'll most most often find associated with Irish music are going to be the fiddle, the flute, and probably the Ilan pipes, which is an Irish word that means elbow pipes, Irish bagpipes. The Ilan pipes would be a very important instrument, uh, which is a kind of a bagpipe, but it's a dry bagpipe. You don't blow into it. Uh, you use your arm. It's Ilan actually means elbow in Gaelic. Hopefully pipes, maybe accordion. Uh, and whatever else might, might show up, guitar player, bazooki player. Uh, I think, for example, that you can never have too many fiddles in the session, uh, but I think there can be such things as too many flute players in the session. I think maybe you get up to like four or five flute players, that's enough. And uh, hopefully a good session, to be a really good session, it doesn't really need any more than about five or six or seven musicians. I think once it begins to get above ten, it begins to get, it can lose, it can lose kind of its cohesion, it can, it can sort of fall apart. I like the way it sounds together, it just has a very, um, I don't know how else to describe it, it just sounds really whole, like together, and it's, um, it just has a good match. It sort of depends on the level of the session. There are some sessions uh, that are geared toward beginners that are just starting to learn a few tunes and, and just kind of get involved in music. Another, uh, which is more toward what, what I'm involved in, is um, a little bit more of a collaborative uh, spirit where very often the players that come to the session at Fergie's, for instance, um, know a lot of the tunes that we're playing. Sometimes not, but, but often they do. You should listen to the wherever the session stalwarts are. You should listen to whatever they're doing and take your cue from them. And don't really start a tune until you're asked. <laughs> One of the reasons why I don't like, for example, going away to the festivals and the Catskills, for example, is we grew up there in a session of like 40 people playing at the same time. I don't like those kind of orchestral side things. I like sessions to be so close to where you can almost like smell each other or that doesn't sound too gross. Fergie's Pub uh, opened in November 1994, which was a little over 21 years ago. Having a, a traditional Irish music session downstairs, or, or a ballad session, like just downstairs from the corner on a Saturday and Sunday afternoon, it's, uh, I guess it's 
it's more authentic. It's more like rather than have four TVs with four different uh, football games on, it's just well, it's magical. Like you know, I mean, TV's not magical. I love Brian Conway, who's my teacher, but um, that's the style that I learn. Brian Conway uh, being one of the one of the best. Um, so that one's a really nice one. Uh, Liz Carroll's great too. Everything about the sound of it, the way that um, different musicians interpret the sound of it as well. Irish music is in American music anyway. I mean, the original settlers that settled along Appalachia were, were Scots Irish or Ulster Scots, as we call them. Um, so it's it's already there in the music. It, it's just an earlier an earlier wave of immigration. So bringing the traditional music of today is just bringing a later version of what those people brought with them. Irish music allows all of us uh, that identify with the Irish culture, whether having been born there and coming over here, or like I have been, I was born here in the United States and I've lived here my entire, well, almost my entire life. Um, regardless of whether you're one of those two people, I think Irish music allows you to connect yourself with a greater past and a greater tradition and a sense of belonging to something that has its origins many, many years ago, but continues to grow and continues to get passed on to new generations and continues to evolve. You know, you can go to Japan, you can have a session in Tokyo, you know, you can go anywhere and have a session. You can go to Paris and find very good French musicians playing traditional Irish music. Uh, as a matter of fact, when you go to County Clare, uh, you go to a session in Doolin, chances are you're going to be listening to Germans and Poles play traditional Irish music. And that's what used to be the heart the hot, the mecca of Irish music, and now it's it's Europeans coming over to play the music in, in Ireland, and a lot of the tourists don't even know that they're sometimes they can't even speak English. But I think for the Irish community, and we're lucky in this in in, uh, in Philadelphia to have uh, members of the Irish community, the plough that we're in, uh, Fergus pub, for example, that insist that at least once a week they're their pub is going to resound to the, to, the, to the sound of the native music. And without them, without pubs like the Plough and the Fergies, we would be severely stuck for a, for a place to play Irish music. And you see, when we come out, it spreads. People get interested. People take it up themselves. Never, I had always thought of Irish music as being, you know, something that, you know, you heard at St. Patrick's Day, and you know, that was it. I, I'm not sure if, if it's important as much as it just is. <laughs> it's become, Irish music become a kind of lingua franca around the world. I mean, if you go almost anywhere, anywhere in the, in the world, you'll find a group who are playing Irish music. 